Welcome to another edition of TechCast. Our guest today is Osama Al Zubi, Cybersecurity VP for MIA at Phosphorus. Welcome, Osama. Thank you, Anita. Um, uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you today. It is indeed an honor. Uh, now we're going to talk about a very uh, interesting aspect of cybersecurity, which is, uh, you know, cybersecurity in IoT, OT devices, the regulations governing, uh, you know, cybersecurity. Uh, and organizations embedding trust into their whole security portfolio. So let's begin with the uh, security of uh, IoT devices. Now, how do you see the threat landscape for IoT OT devices evolving in the next three to five years, especially in the Middle East as compared to the rest of the world? Uh, thank you, Anita. This is definitely such an important question. Let me just take a step back. Today, if we look at the cybersecurity industry in general, we see that this cybersecurity industry has evolved with the same time of the evolution of the internet. So the cybersecurity industry literally is as old as the internet because the internet was primarily created to provide connectivity to do certain things. What started to be emails, file sharing, that ultimately evolved to become the platform of e-commerce and then later on to become the uh, social media platform. And then as we see it today, the mass digital transformation at every level, that platform, every time we had a phase shift, mm -hmm. we had a huge dependency on that. Cybersecurity threat increased and therefore right. the entire cybersecurity industry has evolved with that. Right. However, when we look at this, we look that that was focused primarily on users and IT devices. Right. But at the same time, while this evolution was happening, there was another thing that is parallel to this that was going on, which is the connected devices. Correct. Now, oftentimes we refer to it Internet of Things. We refer to it operational technology. In the medical field, we call it internet of medical things or medical devices. Right, right. But in the national security and military, we call it internet of military devices and military right. things. And right. sometimes we call it industrial internet of things, dot, dot, dot. When we look at Phosphorus Cybersecurity, the company that I am proudly working for, we actually looked at this as an umbrella of devices mm. to differentiate from the IT, and we call it the extended internet of things which is basically an umbrella that encompasses under it what we know today as those devices right. but also all the future devices because as we look at the emerging of technology we are seeing drones robotics flying things connected Absolutely. things etc etc so the evolution of this is also required to be looked at when we look at the cybersecurity threat intelligence absolutely now what role do you think Policy and regulation should play in balancing innovation, uh, especially where IoT, smart cities, AI and all are concerned, and risk, particularly uh, cyber physical attack vectors. You know, we are very lucky to be part of the GCC. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, the Gulf countries, uh, United Arab Emirates, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, other countries, etc., they have pushed the limit of technology on how we employ it to enhance the quality of life and deliver digital services. Furthermore, in parallel, when we look at every country, they have an authority, National Security, uh, Cyber Security Authority, uh, the Cyber Security Council, etc. They have actually developed very well thought as well as extensive cybersecurity regulation, not only on general cybersecurity, but also on verticalized specific cybersecurity. So there are regulations, right. you know, for, uh, for example, for critical infrastructure, regulations for uh, the uh, fi fintech or financial sector. There are also even regulations for general IoT. Definitely there are ways to go, but nevertheless, they are considered to be some of the most advanced cybersecurity regulations in the industry. So we definitely are lucky to be part in the GCC where we see those regulations are evolved and have evolved to actually cover that. But when we look in the industry and we start looking at those verticals, whether it's in the private or public sector, whether it's, for example, in healthcare uh, or in uh, financial sector, manufacturing, in utilities, the smart cities, we see that customers are still slow to adopt 
those cybersecurity regulations that have been uh, uh, ratified and have been uh, published in order for them to actually cover all of those IoT. What we see in the industry, we see that some, or I would say even, maybe I can go as far as saying the majority of those customers are still treating the IoT in the same way of the IT, where we see that, to your point and the questions, on the threat vector, we see that the IoT are completely different species unlike the IT because, right. you know, as the saying goes, you are as strong as your weakest link, you are Absolutely. as secure as your weakest link, Correct. and therefore covering those devices in an applicable way, which number one allows you for proper discovery and uh, vulnerability risk assessment, but also to be proactive and remediate and patch is very critical in this area. So to your point, definitely the IoT is extending and expanding the service attack and therefore those need to be treated in a very specialized way, exactly in the same way that those devices are being, have been manufactured. Unlike the IT, the IT world is completely different from the XIoT world as we view it. Absolutely. Uh, now, let's come to a very important aspect. How do you think organizations embed trust, identity, and resiliency in systems that were not originally built with cybersecurity in mind? You know, I love this question. Resiliency, right? right. Resili how resilient are organizations today to deal with, God, for God forbid, when an attack happened? Right. For example, recently we have seen all over the news what happened in some of the European airports. Right. Uh, previously, we have seen what happened in major organizations in the US and others. Alhamdulillah, uh, here it's it's definitely better. Although right. we have seen a surge in attack, uh, you know, uh, targeting our region. However, Alhamdulillah, it's not as bad as what we have seen in Europe and uh, the United States. So therefore, definitely we see that the increase in service attack possibility is definitely allowing hackers to uh, exploit and uh, I don't know if it's the right word but leverage the uh, vulnerabilities that are available in those devices now when we look at those devices here I'm gonna give you some statistics which are extremely important and critical there are multiple studies that are suggesting hmm. that the average half lifetime for patching some of those IOT devices in our environment is on average is about seven years. Can you imagine? Mm. I just want you to think in an IT world where if there will be no CISO in their place, mm. if there was devices in their IT network, for example, laptops or other critical application server that go even a year without right. properly patching. Right. But today in the IoT world, we do see devices that have, for example, either completely end of life, end of support right. by the vendors right. for years, or the firmware that is running on those devices that have at least few years without patching. But furthermore, we found very astonishing statistics that about 50 to 70% of those devices still have their default credentials. Now I wanna stop here for a moment and explain. Normally a default credential means it is exactly those user ID and password that the vendor publishes with those devices. For example, when you look at CCTV camera or printers or access control, you will see on the box, the vendor will actually write that use this username and password to access right, those devices. Right. Believe it or not, today, we see a lot of devices still in our customer environments have default usernames and password. And mm. that is insane because this would be considered the ultimate vulnerabilities. About right. 60 to 70% of the vulnerabilities we find, those are considered to be remotely exploitable. You can imagine when you combine those where basically a default credentials on those devices, right. but at the same time, they have remotely exploitable uh, uh, vulnerabilities on those devices. Actually, the attack that I'm speaking about that's happened actually in some of those major and critical infrastructure critical customers happen on those devices because, you know, most of uh, customers, they implement uh, NDR, Network Detection and Response. They implemented EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response. They implement all kinds of security in the IT world and they are working great. However, those devices are kind of left behind and therefore attackers today, they are leveraging those devices that are either unpatched or still have credentials or outdated in order for them to attack and uh, basically, um, uh, you know, enter or penetrate into those networks that are considerably secure on the IT level, but they are not on the IoT. Interesting dynamics, actually. Indeed, interesting dynamic, absolutely. Now, um, 
in your opinion, where should enterprises in Middle East and Africa be investing most heavily in right now to build secure foundations for an increasingly connected world? So, we at Fosforos believe that there should be no device left behind. Right. If a device is connected to the network, somebody has mm. to be accountable for it. So, Get number it. one, visibility. Quite honestly, and I'll make a confession here, Phosphorus Cybersecurity, when it was originally founded, we were not intending to address the visibility problem. We right. were trying to address the patching problem mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we believe that that patching problem is complex enough. And we believe we are in the 20th century, the internet is about 40 years old, we should have already solved the visibility problem. However, when we came actually into the industry, we discovered that majority of the customers do not have accurate visibility. And therefore, we went back to the drawing board and add the visibility discovery module. So what happened here is, the visibility is the most critical component of everything that you do thereafter. And therefore, we believe that visibility, accurate visibility, if you will, is going to be foundational for the proper cybersecurity. Absolutely. Uh, that, was, that was a very, very uh, insightful conversation. We learned quite a bit about IoT and the interesting interplay between the, the IoT devices and the other devices, cybersecurity. Thank you so much for taking the time, Osama. Thank, Thank you, you Anita. Very much. Appreciate it. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much.